Thank you for participating in the return to activity after anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction surgery educational program. This program will consist of six units, three of which will be 20 minute online videos with short quizzes afterwards, and three of which will be in-person visits with group based discussion. This is the first unit where we will be discussing what the ACL is and common ways in which it is torn. Let's start out by talking about some facts about the ACL. The ACL is a strong bundle of connective tissue on the inside of your knee. Most people who tear their ACL are involved in sports that involve jumping and cutting movements, such as soccer, basketball, skiing, and gymnastics. However, there are a number of ways that non-athletes can tear their ACL, such as stepping down off of the ledge or twisting the leg while moving. There are approximately 100,000 ACL ruptures in the United States every single year, which is an astounding number, and approximately 70% of these tears are a non-contact in nature injury, which means that these injuries occur not because of a direct blow from another player, but because of, um, for example, landing wrong from a jump or having your leg give out while you're trying to cut. So we call these non-contact injuries, and 70% of ACL injuries are non-contact injuries. Another fact is that women are almost six times more likely than men to tear their ACL. And physical therapists are trained to help individuals with ACL tears and ACL reconstructions to reduce pain and swelling, regain strength and movement, and to return to desired activities. So let's break down the components of the ACL. ACL means anterior cruciate ligament, and so anterior means that it sits on the front of the knee. So there's two ligaments that cross the knee, which cross is where cruciate comes into play. So cruciate means cross. There's two ligaments that cross the knee, the anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior cruciate ligament, and they're named for how they attach to the tibia. So the anterior cruciate ligament attaches to the anterior or front of the tibia, whereas the posterior cruciate ligament attaches to the posterior or back of the tibia, with the tibia being your shin bone, of course. And so the, the anterior cruciate ligament attaches posteriorly to the femur or on the back of your thigh and in the front of your shin. And the posterior cruciate ligament does the opposite of that. And finally, the last part of this name is ligament, which means that it is a passive tissue Ligaments connect bone to bone, and they are passive tissues. That means that they cannot be activated like muscle can. And this, these two ligaments that cross form a stable structure, which prevent the femur from sliding forward or backwards or side to side or other motions like we'll talk about later. Um, so it prevents different types of knee motions from occurring. So we mentioned that ligaments are passive tissues. Um, and we said that that makes them different from muscles because muscles are active tissues. So let's just compare and contrast ligaments and muscles. Passive tissues obviously mean that they cannot be contracted. So in muscle, your brain sends signals down to your muscle, which causes it to contract and generate force and shorten, whereas ligaments do not have this ability and create force by being lengthened or pulled. Muscles and ligaments are also very different in the sense that muscles are a highly adaptive tissue, meaning that they can increase or decrease their force generating capacity to the physical demands that you place on them. So we all know that someone who goes to the gym gets big and bulky and they get stronger, so their muscles are growing, becoming stronger uh, and bigger. The opposite can also happen for muscle if you are um, on bed rest or, for instance, recovering from a surgery and you're placed in a cast so you're immobilized for a period of time, your muscles are experiencing a much lower demand um, and so they're going to adapt to meet that command and your muscles will get weaker. So the ligament can adapt, so the ligaments do change their strength with time. Um, for example, during development you are growing and getting bigger, your ligaments do grow, uh, it's just a much slower process than that seen in muscle. 
So let's talk about some knee postures or knee motions that are known to strain the ACL or pull the ACL and are thought to believe to be involved with the mechanism of how ACL injuries can occur. So the first is rotation. As you see in this picture in the top right, the femur or thigh is rotating in the opposite direction of the shin or the tibia, which can cause a strain on the anterior cruciate ligament um, and again is, could result in a tear. Another way in which the ACL is loaded is through hyperextension or hyperflexion. Um, so these are the extreme limits of the knee's natural movement, extension, flexion, um, or by the shin being pulled outwards. So this is called anterior draw where your shin is just pulled forwards and your thigh is restricted restraining that and the anterior cruciate ligament is loaded between the shin and the thigh. Another movement that is known to cause the ACL to be loaded is frontal plane knee movement um, which is involved in dynamic valgus as you can see here um, by this series of images. So this is a soccer player who is doing a cutting movement who also looks like he's decelerating and you see the knee just kind of buckles and bends inwards and so his knee is moving closer to the center line of his body and his foot is moving away in a way that the knee is never supposed to bend. Um, so this is called dynamic knee valgus and uh, is also known to load your anterior cruciate ligament and is thought to be involved in ACL injuries. So now we'll talk about how those different loading mechanisms or knee movements that are known to be associated with ACL injuries, how those different movements occur during sports. So the first being twisting your knee while keeping your foot plant on the ground, like we talked about before, where your foot is plant on the ground and you're trying to twist or rotate and your body starts turning but your foot is fixed in the ground and so your knee is fixed. That's going to pull at your knee and could load your ACL and tear it. Um, another common way is stopping suddenly while running, so during periods of rapid deceleration. Uh, another way is suddenly shifting your weight from one leg to the next. So you see in this picture to the bottom right, this person is just accepting her weight while landing on her right foot, which caused her knee to move inwards like we saw before, where her knee is moving towards her left and her ankle and her hip are moving out towards her right, um, which is loading that knee in the frontal plane. Um, if you jump and land on an extended knee, that could cause a lot of force to be absorbed and sent right through your musculoskeletal system. And so this energy is absorbed through the ligament, tissue, and cartilage, um, and not through your muscular system, whereas you were, if you were to land with a more flexed knee. Another way, like I said before, hyperextension and hyperflexion, so stretching your knee further than its usual range of motion, could tear the ACL. And while we said that around 70% of ACL injuries are non-contact in nature, um, contact injuries do happen. So a direct blow from another player, whether it be a slide tackle in soccer or, soccer or a hit in football, that could also load the ACL and tear it. So now we'll discuss some features of good landing mechanics compared to some features of bad landing mechanics, like we talked about on the previous slide. So starting with knee flexion, you'll see in the good image on the left that the person is, it's pel their pelvis is much lower to the ground and their knees are much more flexed, which just shows that they absorbed a lot of energy through their muscular system, whereas the person on your right um, is much more, has a much more erect posture. They're standing up straighter and their hips are higher up off the ground. Um, so this is associated with um, different types of knee loads that are bad for ACLs. You'll also see that the person on the left with a good landing posture has their knees right over their ankles, so this is preventing frontal plane or out of plane knee movement, whereas the person on the left or on the right, it looks like their knees are sort of knocking together or moving closer together and they're pushed away, a distance away from their ankle. It's hard to see in this image, but asymmetry is also a feature of bad landing mechanics. So 
landing asymmetries, whether it be impact asymmetries or range of motion asymmetries, have been shown to be associated with primary and secondary ACL tears. And essentially, this is saying that you're hitting the ground harder on one leg. So when people are recovering from anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction surgery, they tend to land harder on their non-surgical limb than on their surgical limb. Um, so this asymmetry, this compensation, is thought to be one potential reason why there are a lot of secondary ACL reconstruction tears when you're returning to sport. So how do we know that we tore our ACL? Well, obviously when it happens, there's going to be a lot of pain. Uh, some people say that they hear a loud pop or a snapping sound, and you're going to feel a very sharp, intense pain at the moment that it happens. Following this, you'll likely have an inability to walk normally and bear weight, um, partially because of swelling, partially because of pain. And you'll also feel kind of unstable when you're moving and not be able to feel where your leg is in space as well. So proprioception is your ability to feel where your legs and limbs are in space while closing your eye. For example, you can flex and extend your leg while closing your eye, and you still know generally how your leg is oriented. This is proprioception, and that's often altered um, when you tear your ACL. So we mentioned that tearing the ACL will be painful. Uh, and so a brief word about pain. Everyone experiences pain. Um, however, everyone has their own individual perception of pain. This perception of pain is typically describing the severity of a stimulus or injury. And it has both physical and mental components where the body is sensing the severity of an injury, whether it be a pinprick, a bee sting, or an ACL rupture. It's sensing the severity of this injury, and your brain has to figure out how to interpret this stimulus that it is now receiving. However, the brain is constantly receiving a large amount of information from the body, and that can make it hard to understand the difference between things like pain and discomfort and apprehension and fear. And so it's important to be able to differentiate between these different sensations or phenomena. For this study, remember that we are defining pain as the discomfort, both physical and mental, directly associated with your injury and not normal soreness or weakness associated with exercise. We mentioned before that uh, once you've torn your ACL and eventually once you get your ACL reconstructed, that people typically have problems with gait and balance or walking and balance. The most typical feature of walking seen in persons with ACL reconstructions uh, is asymmetry, like we talked before in jumping and landing. Asymmetry is also present in individuals following ACL reconstruction surgery uh, during walking. And here we see that throughout the gait cycle, the surgical limb is essentially kept in a more flexed position and contributes less to decelerating and accelerating the body during heel strike and toe off. So essentially, what we're describing is a limp. People who walk with a limp, their leg is a little bit more flexed, and there's just they're decreasing the amount of force that goes through this leg while they're walking. Uh, and this gait pattern is called quadriceps avoidance, where you're trying to use your quadriceps less and generate lower magnitudes of force that will be transmitted through these painful and healing tissues. As a result of this compensation, however, you are likely hitting the ground harder with your healthy uninjured limb, which is likely reflective of a poor compensatory strategy, which is seen as bad. Research has also shown that people following ACL reconstruction have less control of their lower extremity, especially their knee, during walking and running, and even during a static balance and dynamic balance. So ACL reconstructions are also known to affect your static balance. Having someone stand as still as possible, someone following, following an ACL reconstruction will tend to sway a little bit more than someone who hasn't had this injury. And this difference is even greater when having people stand on a 
moving or dynamic surface, such as a BOSU ball or a wobbling board. So this concludes the first unit in the return to activity following ACL reconstruction educational program. Uh, next week, we will be in person at the Granada Lab on Virginia Tech's campus to do a group discussion. And next week, we're going to be talking about how, the, how ACL injuries are diagnosed. Please close this video and return to the link sent to you via email to complete. The quiz should be three questions.